Each generation steps into a new tomorrow, leaving the elders behind. Maybe that's why older people tend to get melancholy and glorify the past, and they tend to be pessimistic about the younger folks who are waving them goodbye. That's what the ancient philosophers say anyway. But one thing is certain, when it comes to race and ethnic relations and differences, we may be able to communicate globally in seconds, but we have difficulty creating opportunities where we can talk across generations about those issues. This is Crossing Cultures, Changing Lives, and I'm Kitty Oliver. And we look at these issues in unusual ways. In this episode, we're gonna to talk to people who span over 80 years of U.S. history when it comes to race and ethnic relations. And I wonder if the common refrain is true. We tend to say that the only change that is going to occur will be through the younger generation. But is the younger generation waiting for the older ones to show them the way? And if you listened in to what some of them are saying about their experiences, I wonder what you'd hear. I wonder. So, do you think there are still racial problems today? Some white people may feel a sort of supremacy or um, maybe a little bit higher status than maybe other races. And I've never viewed myself like that, but you know, I can tell from some situations that maybe I was perceived that way. Rather than trying to come together and find something that bonds us all, it's more of just trying to build up an, an individual race as one rather than you know, coming together. Uh, do you have interracial uh, friendships and relationships? Um, I, I'm actually in an interracial relationship right now, currently. And how is that being accepted or perceived? Fine, I haven't really come encounter with too much problems. You know, some people feel that maybe it's going to be a burden on me because it's not as widely accepted as maybe it should be. But I feel that it's, it's only an issue if you make it an issue. Maybe I can somewhat set an example and show that it's okay to have a more open-minded opinion or approach to situations because it's not going to hurt anything by broadening, you know, that perspective and I guess trying to figure out where that opinion comes from, you know, why do you feel that way? Is there a legitimate reason or it's just something that you've been taught or other people have told you? We as a generation now, we need to start taking upon the change in ourselves and not just, you know, in making more rules of, of equality or, you know, more rules of giving everyone opportunity it needs to be rules of ourselves and knowing that we're all we're all humans you know we all came into this world the same way no matter what you believe and we're all going to leave the same way so i mean i i hope that one day it really does change for real but right now it just seems like more of a development rather than an actual change i was probably like 4 years old at my grandfather's house in north carolina and I was watching the show Different Strokes, which is about uh, two black children that are raised in a white family. I used to love the show, and I was watching it. My grandfather came in, and he got real angry and said, turn off that show with them damn colored folks. You know, that's, not, that's not allowed in this household. And at that age, I didn't really know what was wrong with it. Mr. Dalfit was the school janitor at our school, and he was the nicest, most loving guy in the world. All the kids loved him. We all adored him. And he lived on Settlement Road, which was very close to my house. It was a very poor um, road, dirt road, um, and it's where the black people, some black people lived. And I just remember um, just the big difference between that, like how he could go to school, how everybody could love him and stuff, and then yet they were living down there and they were almost shunned to an extent by my parents and by other people. When I was young, I was probably in first or second grade, and I wanted to have over one of my friends, and, I, and we were, he was going to come over for a sleepover, and uh, I told my mom that he was black, and it wasn't allowed. And it took me years to actually figure that one out. 
I think everybody in my family would say that they're not racist. Um, however, you can hear the racist remarks in a very subtle, slight way. I feel like I, I can try to teach them as best as I can, but they, you know, you can't teach a person any of this stuff. They've really got to come to these awarenesses on their own. Now they will deny. My brothers, my dad will deny up and down that they're not racist, yet they'll let the N-word slip out here and there, and it's like, well, how can you, you know, how can you say that? Listen to the way you're talking. Therein lies the racism that's embedded within people. It's like the sins of the fathers get passed on to the children. So how and do you break the cycle? <laughs> just make different choices. You just, you flat out make different choices with people. Um, you just make different choices. <laughs> To be honest, in Jamaica, we don't really have that whole issue of race. It's more like a class difference. So I wasn't quite fully aware of the whole, you know, I am black, you are white, you are whatever. Until I went to undergrad at Fisk University. And I remember one of our first classes in African-American literature, our professor said, how does it feel every morning to be reminded that you're black? And it never occurred to me because I don't think I ever was reminded that I was black in Jamaica. That kind of school at a black college or university, it, you tend to get like overly indulged into the whole issue. I couldn't understand it at first. You know, I was in classes and everyone was so passionate about overcoming racial barriers and obstacles and I just didn't get it. And I remember some of my other friends from the Caribbean, we just didn't get it, you know. In Jamaica, the prime minister is black, all the lawyers, the doctors, the bank people, everyone looks more or less like me, just maybe a different shade. When I came, I automatically realized that there was some tension, I think, between African-Americans and West Indian blacks. And I remember a couple of our professors would talk about that constantly. And so I didn't know how to approach African-Americans because I, I just didn't feel like they would accept us because we didn't have the same passion about racial issues as they did, especially at Fisk University. So at first, I think it was very difficult for us to understand each other. We were like, get over it already. And they were like, what? You know, you don't understand. And, and, we, and so it was hard at first. And I think that still exists even in the older community where you find that there's a tension between the West Indian blacks who are just about over it and African Americans who think that we think we're better than them. I think it's easier to have relationships with whites because when you, like, we don't have that attitude of inferiority. Like I said, I never grew up not thinking I could be the next prime minister of Jamaica or a lawyer or a doctor or whatever it was. There was no obstacle, nothing stopping me. So I grew up where everyone was just about the same. You know, our motto in Jamaica is out of many, one people. And I really grew up with that mentality. So I approached everyone, white, African-American, Hispanic, with the same amount of respect that I wanted them to treat me with. So developing relationships, and some of my closest friends are white now. So. I don't think I had that much of a difficulty or most of my family or relatives had difficulty getting into relationships with whites. The point is, this is a different generation with different experiences, eh? I think my generation is more accepting of diversity and variety. And I think for that reason, the racial attitudes aren't as pronounced and distinct as they were. It may be there underlying, you know, somehow high hidden. I don't believe it's gone, but I think in our generation, we're much willing to, m more willing to overlook some of those racial barriers. The fact that we are, we, we get more information about the different races and the different ethnicities, it has helped to reduce that ignorance of, I don't know, so I am afraid. My experience with race or having to define my race as a mixed person really started when I moved to the U.S. Um, when I came here it started I think when I was filling out applications for college and every single forum asked what race are you and I found that very difficult because um, I have a lot of races in me and so I didn't know if I should check each box or my box didn't seem to be on the form. 
Um, and so that was the first time when I really questioned, well, what race am I? You know, and I kind of decided that, well, I'm of mixed race, which a lot of people don't seem to identify with. My grandmother is, well, was, she's deceased from China. Um, and her husband, she married a black maroon from Jamaica. And so my father is mixed in that sense where he's half Chinese, half um, black. And my mother is also mixed. She is Portuguese, Cherokee, Indian, black, and Scottish. I'm not just black, I'm not just Cherokee, you know, I'm, I'm all of those things. Black people want to define me as black and I seem to have a problem with that, not because I don't like black people, because I am partially black, but because I feel that defining myself as such is ignoring all the other parts of me, and I have a problem with that. White people, they don't see me as white, obviously not, because I don't fit those features, but um, I don't know. When they try and ask me what I am, it's because they think I look exotic to them. Um, and so when, if I tell them I have white in them, they're a little surprised but I think they're probably a little bit more understanding for some reason, I think. Not sure quite why, but they are. My mom has less black in me than I do, and she considers herself black, if you ask her. And she has a problem with the fact that I don't identify myself as black. She thinks it's absurd, <laughs> which is very funny. She looks more Cherokee than I do. My dad, I've never really spoken to him. It's weird, he has my complexion, but he has very slant eyes because of his mom. Um, so i really never spoken to him about it, but I know it's an issue of contention with my mom because she has a problem with how I define my race. My mom's reaction to, her, to how she defines herself might be from her mom's experience because her mom was Scottish and Cherokee, but growing up in the South, she's from North Carolina, um, she had to hide the fact that she had Cherokee in her because she wanted to pass as white. And so if, if anybody found out that she wasn't pure white, then she'd be black, even though she didn't have black in her. In those days, if you had anything else but white, you were black. And so that's probably why my mom defines herself as black, because she has black in her, so she's just black. So I think there is a generational difference. I was raised mostly in Miami and then in Boca Raton. So in Miami, it, everything was integrated. and. It was just normal for me. I mean, I had classmates who were Hispanic and black and Asian and just from all over, and it just, it didn't phase me uh, at all to be around people of different backgrounds. And what's interesting is I was in the Northeast last summer for work, and I was at a college up there, and it was all white, and it freaked me out because I'm just so used to diversity. When I was little, if I ever, made a, a comment that was even remotely uh, closed-minded in any way, they, they just told me to rethink it and, and reconsider why I said what I said. Um, so that taught me the open-mindedness that I have today. I have a friend from Sri Lanka, a friend from India, a friend, oh, I'm half Jewish, half Christian of sorts, um, and white, and a mix as well. Um, and then, who else is there? There's a, a white Jewish kid, and then there's a half black, and then a quarter Hispanic, quarter white kid. So it's, and then an Asian kid, and we all hang out. It's this great group of people. So all of my friends are really, really diverse, and it makes things so much more interesting, and I'm a little more culturally aware than I was a couple years ago before I had these friends. My mom has told me this story. Um, she was on an airplane when she was little. I don't know where she was flying from, but I guess she was coming home. No, she was going somewhere, and this girl that was around her age found out she was Jewish and said to her, do you have horns? And that's this common, was this common misperception at the time that Jews had horns. So that was interesting to hear. And I think it's a lot different now, a lot different. But I think, then again, it's the environment that you're in, because I'm in a diverse environment. But again, if I go to another state, another county even, it's going to be different, and you're going to be looked at differently. I guess because you're Filipino, you see things a little differently. I think the biggest thing in my life that I've seen that really hit me the strongest was when I visited the Philippines for a month when I was in seventh grade, so I was like 13, 14. With all the politics going on now, I realized the huge 
wealth and dif uh, differences in the society and in the world and where my, uh, I guess, culture background kind of falls into that. Considering that my parents came from nothing in rags and now you could consider us, I guess, a part of upper middle class, I suppose. I don't think race is a big issue considering that there are wealthy people of every race in every society. I think it's more classism, as in people are separated by how much income they have and just how much money, and that uh, most people are actually in the same boat regardless of what skin color you are. I think that the older generation doesn't really understand about our generation. I would say that our generation is bombarded by a bunch of information that no other generation has ever faced, and we're, I think, stressed out, losing sleep over many things that but something everyone has in common is that a lot of us are apathetic to uh, race, uh, politics, any, a lot of things that are really important I suppose. I think the American, like our generation, we've lost faith in every system. Somewhere along the way people kind of accepted that the best you can do in life is get your own. Uh, a lot of the problems in the world is really because of the wealth imbalance not because of racism. That's just a small byproduct.